Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I'm playing on PlayStation 4, and that's a big deal for this channel because pretty much all of my Call of Duty content up until this point has been Xbox, Xbox 360 or Xbox One, but you're going to get to see a lot more PlayStation 4 content in the future for several different reasons, all of which we'll talk about today along with three other off-topic things. Going to be going all over the place in today's commentary, but I should probably describe the gameplay first. I'm using the Obsidian Steed, which I somehow got very early on, and I'll talk about that a little bit too, to wreck people on the map and Instinct. I think I'm going to go uh, about 4.5 KD, almost 5.0 KDR, and just under 70 kills, like 64, 5, 6, something like that. Really high scoring slaying gameplay, something that you don't see from me very often. Unfortunately, it's not going to be very objective oriented until a little bit over the halfway point, at which point I realized I can't rely on my teammates for anything and I have to cap these flags myself. But you're probably already thinking, hmm, Drifter, X Bro, retiring his X Bone and becoming a Sony pony? Hashtag Intel Black Ops 3 is the PlayStation 4 exclusive. No, and again, don't quote me on that. That's me parodying somebody else. I really don't know if Black Ops 3 is going to be PS4 exclusive or not. I don't know if the COD contract is moving away from Microsoft to PlayStation 4. What I do know is that the contract with Microsoft expires this year. Advanced Warfare is the last game currently that is contracted to be a Microsoft DLC exclusive, Xbox DLC exclusive. That ends and that is over with. There are currently negotiations in renewing with Microsoft or being outbid by Sony. Both companies would like to have exclusive COD DLC. They're not sure how much to pay for it, how much it's worth. There's a trade-off here and there. The big trade-off this time around is that the biggest group of Call of Duty players right now are actually PlayStation players. PlayStation 4 has a lot more players online than Xbox, and that's just kind of how it is. So if they're doing exclusive DLC with Microsoft, they're going to have to get a lot of money to trade off those you know, DLC buyers that are kind of getting the shaft by having to wait for it. But technically, they get it. They just get it later, which isn't very fun. So I honestly don't know where Black Ops 3 is going in terms of exclusivity. It might go with neither. It might just have DLC on both on the same day, which would be very nice for a change instead of, you know, our Sony ponies getting shafted while our X-Bros get stuff early. But that's not the reason I'm playing on PlayStation 4. I'm not trying to, like, diversify my COD bonds and get used to this stuff. The main reason I'm doing PS4 gameplay is because I honestly hate my Xbox One. It's been a really frustrating console for me, and I've pretty much just about given up on it. Anything that I can play on PlayStation, I will. I'm really tired of the slow menus, of the less than 1080p graphics. I'm really tired of the crashing, of the friends list not working, of not being able to chat with my friends, of all the other problems that I've complained about in all of my videos. I'm just really sick of it, and instead of complaining about it, I'm just going to do something about it. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is, I'm going to saddle up on my Sony pony, and you're going to get to see a lot more PlayStation 4 for me. There's some other reasons, too, though. True 1080p is nice. For YouTube purposes, this video will look crisper and clearer than the Xbone videos because we don't have to do any upscaling. And anytime you do upscaling and then you render it and then you re-render it and process it, there's some smoothing and some kind of associated problems and it can end up looking really, really ugly. So my PlayStation videos will inherently look more crisp than the Xbox videos. You, I also get better matches on PlayStation 4. Why? Because there's more players. With double the player base, it's way easier to get a better connection-based match. And I found that the lag is not as significant here. And I have very few lag problems in general but it's just been really nice to me so far and logically that it's just a trend that continues so I'll be doing that and I have more PlayStation 4 fans now which is what's really kind of weird because my channel was all Xbox a lot of like Sony or PlayStation people didn't like, like didn't like me but I've noticed a big big change in my in my channel a big trend to shift away from the Microsoft stuff and toward the Sony and PC stuff and I need to get on top of that I can't leave my fans behind I think it's not mid duty is the wrong word but it just makes sense if my fans are moving to different consoles and different things that in order to stay relevant and interesting that I should move with them. So I'll be putting a little bit of effort to be showing you some more PlayStation 4 stuff, those of you out there. Now, Xbox isn't dead. It's not going away. Of course, I have like 8 million different things going on on Xbox, a Halo, and of course the DLC in my higher level and my main account still on Xbox One, but there will be a lot more of this. I have noticed some differences, though, between the consoles as far as player base, and this goes back to the age-old debate of, oh, you know, it's easier to play on PlayStation 4, and as much as the PlayStation 4 guys might not like it, the competition really isn't as stout on the PlayStation 4 as it is on Xbox One. Xbox One or Xbox in general, that's where all the competitive guys are, that's where all the pro players are, that's where most of the tryhards congregate. PlayStation's a lot more casual. For better or for worse, it's a lot more fun, a lot more aggressive, a lot less campy, you don't see as much, like, drop-shotting and crazy stuff. And of course, that means, yeah, the players are easier, and it is easier for me to get gameplays like this one where I stomp people, but it's not like the biggest difference. It's not like one is MLG gods and one is noobs. It's like, if Xbox is 100% tryhard, PlayStation is like 
93% the difficulty. It's just kind of a small step back. But one of the things about this that I wanted to do is I have a very fresh account on PlayStation 4. I've got kind of like an almost virgin account. I've done very, very little with it. And one of the reasons I'm building up my kill-death ratio is because I want to retest skill-based matchmaking. I did, you know, the big 20-minute skill-based matchmaking video, busted my butt on that one, but... Uh, a lot of people didn't take to the data very well because it conflicted with the things that they believed, so they felt that it was maybe made up or bought out or bullshitted or that I didn't try it on the right console and the right settings and that all this, a lot of different stuff. So one of the things I'm going to do on my PlayStation account is get my kill-death ratio as high as I possibly can with a lot more games like this where I just stomp people, if not playing objectively, just kill them a lot. And when I get it sub sufficiently high and I'm up at my maximum level and I feel that it's kind of got a good match for me as far as skill goes, it's own internal thing. I'm going to be retesting connections and comparing to my Xbox account. My Xbox One account has like a 1.05 kill death ratio. It's not super spectacular. I'm not super proud of it. My excuse that I'll pass off to you is that I do in-depth testing. I don't know how many games I can play with an MP443 Grok, the two-shot to kill pistol with an ACOG sight, and keep my kill death ratio up. I just really can't. I can't do weird challenge guns and do that, but I can do that. I can just stomp on PlayStation 4. I don't have to worry about doing goofy stuff all the time. I can just use my steed and get that as high as possible and see if I can get some good skill-based matchmaking data. Also thought about doing live commentaries on PlayStation 4. Been considering getting more into live commentaries and streaming in general and doing it a little bit more on this console than the X1. Or I saw kind of like last year with uh, the with the Ghost launch that a lot of people, uh, I think T. Martin and Ali, and I, I can't remember all the people that did this, but a lot of commentators had like a high kill death ratio live challenge or like a PS4 challenge. And that always seemed like a good idea to me, but I was reluctant to do it because it seemed like copying. Try really hard not to copy people. And I might not do exactly that here, but I was thinking about making just a gameplay series here on the PlayStation on a Virgin account where I don't have to worry about testing things and kind of getting my own sort of style going. i maybe work that into the live commentary, make some new content, something like that. As for why I have the Obsidian Steed at as low a level as I do, honestly, I cannot tell you the answer. I have no idea why I have this weapon at the level I do. I think I got this at like level 7 or 8. It was my third ever supply drop. The third one that I ever got in this game, I open it up and I have a Steed. Best weapon in the game possible, I get it right very low level, and that kind of does lend to the conspiracy theory that you get better guns in the lower levels. I do kind of believe that somewhere in the first like 20 or 30 levels that it's programmed to give you at least one elite gun because it feels good and encourages you to play. It's not unreasonable, it's not entirely unfair because it'll happen to everybody. I just happened to get lucky and got this one right off the bat, and I do admit it makes things a lot easier. This is an awesome weapon. If you can use the Obsidian Steed, it's amazing. As much as I like the Inferno, and as godly as the Inferno is up close, the Steed is just the best, because I can run a silencer on it with pretty much no penalty. Four-shot people all the way across the map. Very high damage weapon, very accurate, very easy to use, very few drawbacks. Fire rate's a little bit slow, I admit, but it's extremely consistent, and I like it. So you'll be seeing a lot more of the Steed on here. I am still adapting to the new PlayStation controller. I've been doing Xbox controllers for years and years and years and years and years, and not as much on PlayStation. Even though I do honestly like the new, is it DualShock 4? I think it is, the new PlayStation 4 controller. I liked it at 3 the first time I used it. I've been liking it. It's a huge step up over the past PlayStation controllers, but I don't feel that... That the PlayStation controller is as good as the Xbox controller. Maybe it's an issue of familiarity, maybe it's an issue of design, but I always just preferred the Xbox controllers over anything else. But this is okay. I mean, I do have a PlayStation 4 scuff, which I'll be reviewing eventually, but it doesn't have four paddles. It only has two. I've kind of got addicted to four paddles. I haven't had to hit face buttons in a long time, so I find myself trying to hit paddles that aren't necessarily even there on this particular uh, controller. Hmm, could be worse. I'll get used to it in a little bit. I'll work it out. I'll be playing a little better. I'll be getting some higher gameplay. And that's kind of it for this commentary. I know it was a little rambly, a little bit all over the place, but I just wanted to talk about some of my experiences, some of the things I'm going to be doing on this channel. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, I hope you like, favorite, and subscribe. But I'm going to go ahead and bounce off and just toss it off to this last bit of gameplay here to finish out. Drifter out. Nice. Good work, team. Yeah. I'll give Irons the good news. Nice. Well, I started to suck it towards the middle. <laughs> Fuck. I had to head even. Damn. 64. Jesus.